Hi there, guys. Welcome back. Uh, it's Mark here from uh, Kainchum, player and coach uh, for table tennis. We're here today on the second of the series that I've called Table Tennis Chats because I couldn't think of a better name. Um, so here <laughs> today we're here with Ricardo, probably one of my favourite, um, you know, people in the local Bath and Bristol table tennis scene. So Ricardo, if you want to introduce yourself. Well, I'm Ricardo. <laughs> I'm Ricardo Perpetua. I know this guy from playing with him uh, in the same team in Kenchum um, and Key Centre, sorry, Key Centre Club. So we've been playing together for up to three years. And I'm, I'm also a coach, level one coach like he is. <laughs> um, so we did the set, this at the same time, which was quite interesting. <laughs> and I, it's all right, it's been okay. Um, we've been on this break of table tennis, but hopefully we'll come back soon. Yeah, no, it's certainly been hard. We've um, we've no table tennis at the moment. The lockdown, I think, has got everyone uh, down a little bit. I mean, you're quite a positive chap. I mean, how have you found the lockdown um, yourself so far? I won't say it, but I do have a table and a robot. <laughs> so I could practice a couple of times, not many times, not many times, though, as much as I wanted, but um, just to keep, you know, keep the touch timing. Yeah. Um, the lockdown it itself was a bit annoying at the end at the end of it because I, I'm back to work already. So two months without doing anything and you know basically not practicing the sport that I love was really annoying. <laughs> Just gave 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 us time to do other stuff, but yeah, no yeah, table. True. Time, <laughs> true, true. Um, and so first of all, Ricardo, I just want to ask you your. Uh, if you like your history of, of table tennis, you know, how did you um, first get involved in the sport? Um, and did you yeah. did you try at a young age? Well, yes. Yes and no. Um, I only played with my dad, basically, because I wasn't authorized by my mother. I can, call, I can totally tell you the story. The story was... It's, it's funny, anyway. It, I was probably around 10, 12 years old, and... My dad started to play with me, and obviously I got interested, and I really enjoyed it. And I like, you know, the things, the, the 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 chops, and how to keep the ball in play, and everything. And and I was I was taken to try in a club, and I was there probably for I don't know two months or so, practicing with them, which was two nights, yeah, two nights per week, or two evenings. And um, my grades at school dropped, and my mom said, "No, nope, you're not having this." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she didn't allow me to continue, so so I had to stop practicing something that I was enjoying at the moment. I was really keen to practice, mm -hmm. and I am a bit obsessed with things too. So when I started to play, I was really keen to know more and play more, obviously, and that was op opposite to the school <laughs> and and I wasn't allowed to continue. So I kept I kept on practicing with my dad basically. I later later when I was around twenty five more or less I looked for it again. Um this this was with, when I was still in Portugal and I helped uh, a coach and he was actually a professor at, in a school like a college and they had a couple of uh, players there they were practicing with, with robot and without robot and I was uh, helping just doing you know some drills and other than that it was just socially I never played in any competitions other than here in England basically so when I came back to the sport it was actually because we incentivated one you know me and my brother and my dad, we met this um, what, four years ago, something like that. And we played together, you know, and that brought me back the incentive to play again. And I looked, I looked in Bath and where I could play, you know, on, on the evenings. I found Ken in St. John's School, you know, and that, that was announced on the internet. So I looked up where the address was and just 
self-motivated and went there <laughs> and took my bat, you know, it was not, not nothing special, but just gave me to, to start. And, I, and that was it. Now I'm playing in three different leagues. <laughs> uh, playing with you as my colleague, we played a, a lot. Basically, that's, that's it, how I started. Yeah, that's interesting because, yeah, I forgot that your brother actually plays. He plays um, out in Switzerland, isn't it? Switzerland, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've met your, your dad as well when he came over a few months back, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and He also plays now. He also plays now. Uh, he went back to the sport as well. We convinced him, found, we found a place close to, well, not very close, but where, where he lives in, in that city. And um, he's now playing twice per week, like practicing and actually belong, belongs to a league, a local league. So that's good, you know. Yeah, it's good that we're all back. <laughs> Yeah, quite quite the family of players. This season just gone, we got your son involved in the sport as well. Yeah, my son as well, yeah. He's also a natural, I would say. He's very natural on his, his strokes and movements. And if you tell him how to do it, he'll do it. I think it's easy. He's a very sporty guy. I took him into the Bristol League and then the year after was into the Bath League with, with us, you know, playing for us. Yeah, and of course, um, you know, his, his big passion is football as well. And you're a bit of a footballer yourself back in Portugal, weren't you? Yeah, more, fu- you know, futsal, futsal. Oh, futsal. That was, yeah, that, that was, I was more keen to play futsal than, than normal football, let's say. And for those, <laughs> and for those that don't know, um, futsal is uh, indoor, isn't it? On like a five-a-side yeah. court with a slightly oh, yeah. heavier ball, isn't it? Yeah, smaller ball heavy ball doesn't need to be indoor can be you know outside yeah and i was gonna say and then um obviously when you joined the bath league about three years ago you started off in division two wasn't it with um was it with key center or did you play for someone else before no i played only for you guys and then i joined the um, prune team in the men's league the bristol league as well I was played playing for page page club so that was it. I started on three leagues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, I wanted to bring on to you know the sort of standard of of your play. You mentioned earlier that you know sort of an obsession to practice and try hard, and you know put yeah. your all into something. Um, I guess that's already answered the question I'm going to ask. But you know the rapid improvement that you've seen over the three leagues. What would you put that sort of down to? Not only not only playing. And time in, in the table, but also the interest that I've got. You know, I I want to know what technically, you know, how a stroke is done. So I investigate that. I watch YouTube videos. You know, I watch people playing, and I I want to know that. I've, I've tried loads of bats. I've spent a lot of money <laughs> in new bats and new rubbers and try to understand what they say, what's sticky, what's grippy, you know, all those expressions that table tennis has got. And and I think that the development comes from that interest, you know, and that will to, you know, to do as it's said that it should be done. And I'm, I'm actually a perfectionist, you know, in my life. So when I put myself into something, I have to do it properly. So... So well, that's it. That, that's probably why I'm why my development was was quick. So I put a lot of effort and time and study into into the sport. Yeah, so a real real student of the game then. Um, and obviously yeah. that that perfection, you know, that perfection, striving with perfection all the time. Um, that's kind of relates into your working life as well, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about about that? Could be, yeah. Well, I'm a goldsmith um, professionally. Um, I work for a company here in, in Bath, Mallory's, Mallory Jewelers. And, you know, our, my job, I've done this all my life since I was little as well, because <laughs> my dad is also a goldsmith. So I grew up in the middle of it. When you do a, a piece, you don't want it to be wonky. You know, you don't, well, I don't want to. <laughs> I, 
I want it to be symmetric and everything, so I achieve a certain level of what I call perfection, which is which is never perfect unless a machine does it, you know, but doing it manually, you want to achieve as much as you can. So that's probably where it comes from, the perfection, you know, but it's also about my education and everything, you know, not just about what I do yeah. professionally, but the way I was raised, the way I, you know, see things in life. And if you can do it properly, why, why not, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I've I've never met, you know, a sort of more positive person uh, than yourself, you know, just generally in, you know, day to day life. Um, I think that has a lot, a lot to do with, you know, mindset has a lot to do with you practicing your strokes and getting that stroke right, despite maybe losing that point or that match, as long as you've got your, your strokes and your, your footwork and your technique right, you're happy with, with how you've played. That's what I've seen. Yes, yes. I, I aim for... For the best if i can't do it i'll do it if i can't next time if i can't then next time <laughs> and so we you know like, like we've already said we, we've shared a couple of seasons together now um in bath um have there been any uh interesting moments or any um <clears throat> sort of stories that you think um you know be interesting to the viewers watching today my personal stories and achievements is just for for the pride of it, but I don't want to go into it. I don't think that's any useful for me. I, I haven't achieved anything that is, you know, just on lower levels. So, and I want to progress, and I want to go further. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to tell any story that makes me, you know, proud. Just, I'm happy with, with the results that I've had and all those percentage things and everything that's the result of the effort, you know. But the cool story probably is um, <laughs> on the last, uh, I, I went already twice to the top 16 in Montreal in Switzerland wow. to watch table tennis, live table tennis. And I want to watch every, you know, no, I want to watch every game basically. So we go, it's over a weekend, we go early Saturday morning, come home 7 p.m. in the evening, then go back early morning. <laughs> and basically it's the same time frame. So it's a full weekend of table tennis. And I think that I've learned a lot just by watching the professionals doing it, you know, that people, the way they do the strokes and what they aim, their that their footwork, you know, the strategy that they use. It's also very interesting to observe how they win the points, you know, that those spectacular uh, rallies that they, you know, they do on, on full, full power, you know. I think I've learned a lot just by watching that. But cool story was that this year in the final uh, was Timo Ball and um, Georgi Tarko. And I was in the crowd, um, calling out for Darko. Although, with all due respect for Timo, I think he's a legend already. You know, his achievements are huge. And I do follow him, but he's a lefty, you know. I don't know if Georgic is a lefty. Well, so I, I don't observe him or his techniques because he's a left-handed player. So I was calling out for Georgic, and I did ask them, you know, to take a photo and they allowed to. I don't know if Timo know that I was calling out for Georgie uh, outside, but I said, I said to Timo, well, you're always on the top, right? You know, and we took the photo. Um, I felt myself a little bit embarrassed because he was quite serious <laughs> in the photo. So I, I don't know if he knew that I was um, the one calling for Georgie, you know, to, just a funny, it was just a funny moment. We did take take the photo though. <laughs> I do have the photo. If you want, if you want, I'll send it to you. Awesome, awesome. I um, I mean, a couple couple of like little moments stood out for me um, over the past couple of years. Um, with sort of me and you, and um, mainly sort of training actually have, have stood out. Like me, me and you would just have like mad sort of 
first one to 20 games, you know, down at the Summerdale Pavilion. Uh, I'm, sorry to Saturday morning. Wait, wait. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I need to thank you for that. I, I've never done that publicly. I need to thank you for that because you're a very awkward player. Play with, you play with everything. <laughs> you play with the bat, net, edges, everything that you can. <laughs> you can put the ball back for a long period of time. Um, and for someone that was developing, you know, an attacking game or my technique, that was very helpful. And I, I think I progressed because of those matches that we did, the best of 10 or best of 20 or whatever it was. <laughs> very interesting. Thank you for that. Thanks for helping me out. Yeah, no worries. And, um, you know, one, one story from the Bath League as well was um, we were playing away. I forget where we were we were playing but um because you drive you were picking up me and um phil smith um from the uh Whitcomb high street and yeah. me and phil both had to finish work and then meet straight there so we went to the pub and had you know a pint off i think <laughs> you know, i might have even had two and um then you were calling us saying where are you where are you we had to then run up the high street down our drinks you know it, that was um obviously you you weren't directly there but it was kind of like that um almost like a naughty kid feeling, you know, when we got in the car, you know, and uh, yeah, because obviously in, everything needs to be professional when you, you go play a league game and maybe that was a bit of a fail in that one. Well, I don't think the local leagues, <laughs> well, we, I, call, I called you out as, as I usually do. Where are you? Um, I'm not allowed to swear. Sorry, I won't do it um, correctly. <laughs> um, but I think the local leagues help helps us also to relax a little bit, you know, when we're facing the, op the opponents. Everyone wants to win, obviously, but mm. it's just a local league. It's not that important, you know. You not you don't have a prize on it. It's only for pride if you want to. But if if not, why not have a good banter? You know, have a good moment, a good evening, and and practice the sport that we like. So why not? <laughs> so the pint before is not advisable, I would say, but it's up to you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I'll cut that out now then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the other thing about last season in particular, like um, because obviously we got we got promoted together from Division Two to Division One, mm. and last year with um, Key Centre B, um, we actually <laughs> finished above our A team and. Um, you know, we beat our A team and uh, narrowly lost the other game and ended up finished 10 points ahead. You know, they were the team spirit that we showed during those two games and, you know, one or two others, you know, games that we had to win and, and we won them and did it with, um, you know, a bit of comfort as well in some of those games. You know, that was particularly pleasing. We, we go on to like, so next season and the sort of future, if you like, you know, it's been rumoured in Bristol, um, you corrected me just before we came on, there's not set in stone yet, but they might not hold the doubles because of, you know, COVID and social distancing. Would that affect your, your game plan or your tactics or anything like that? Um, I, we normally play the Brist in, in the Bristol, in the Bristol League, we normally play the doubles in the end, so it wouldn't match a lot, you know. It's just, I don't know, it's a matter of playing the singles, you know, and how we adjust to that and to the nine points on offer instead of ten. Uh, I, I don't see that will be a big difference, but the doubles brings a lot of fun to the game. That's uh, what I would say, you know, and we've played a lot of doubles <laughs> together. Um, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know. We'll see, you know, we'll see because it's nothing decided yet. It depends on how the government and the governing bodies of table tennis take it in the future, how the rules will be and what type of distancing and things like that. For what I've seen already on, on YouTube and and, and the, which one, the Bundesliga, the, the German one. The German league, yeah, and table tennis. They are, they were playing, or was it Dusseldorf Masters? They were playing on, only on one side of the table, you know, and not shaking hands and not doing those things. But that was an event that happens. That could be an idea, you know, to follow certain measures if you know people need that and we'll leave the doubles for the next year for the next season <laughs> yeah you know it all depends on how relaxed it will be in the future 
So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm not scared of it. You know, I think this is uh, a process we have to go through, and it will be fine. It's just a matter of time. Let's give it some time. If that's what we needed. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And of course, like me and you, you know, as a, as a doubles pair, I think we've been quite effective. But then, you know, on, on one side of the scale, you know, really, really good. On the other side of the scale, a little bit down there, like below the camera, because two instances immediately spring to mind uh, on the good, the bad and the, the ugly. Um, the good one, we'll we say first, um, that was we... Um, we did that Battle of the Paddle one year with um, me, you and Alex, wasn't it? And for those who don't know, Battle of the Paddle is a social league in Bristol for businesses to network and get to know other business professionals, essentially, like a very loose marketing uh, type of networking event. And we, we actually got to the final of, of this competition. Um, you sort of yeah. play different teams and then the top 16 get to a final. So we got to the final, we gradually progressed up through, we thought, oh, you know, we're doing all right. We started to look at the teams who we were playing and, you know, we actually then got, got to the final against, um, who was it? Was it Seven Paddlers? I can't remember exactly the name that they no. had. I remember so, the guy, if I see them, but I can't remember. Hence, yeah, but... So we, we got to the final and, um, yeah, we actually um, got to play at a skate park um, with, you know, ramps and barriers all around and people sitting down having um, a few warm cans of lager and stuff and you know quite a boisterous uh, atmosphere if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, it was you, you, you actually sort of um, you know pulled me through that game a little bit um, in terms of you know tactical knowledge and, and calming, calming me down a little bit not to play up to the crowd. Do you remember much about that final? <laughs> yeah I do remember that you were enjoying it as much as you could and every point that you, you got was like cheering up in the crowd and everything that was really cool so i can't forget that this is a good experience and was actually one of our first success together so that that will never be forgotten <laughs> it was all right it was good we won three two by the way they were they were good players on the other side yeah in all was, fairness they were yeah yeah, yeah it was, and yeah I, I love that buzzing atmosphere like you say playing up to it a little bit because you know you've got to have a bit of fun when you sort oh, of play right. table tennis Definitely. It's funny, you know, some people get upset when people are watching them playing and or recording and, and we're playing, we're playing, you should be enjoying it. It's only local league as well, you know, like you say, you know, it's only a, an amateur competition. Yeah, we could make it better though, we could promote it a little bit better and probably start filming some matches and, you know, or or making up some clips and promoting on social media, like you, you once said to me, you know, how to improve this and how to get more people, because it's um, from the moment that I began, it's a very hidden sport. You see, it's played in church halls, uh, school halls, you know, <laughs> and nobody knows that's happening. Nobody, or, or just a few people, or the ones that practice now. I would actually like to see it more open to more people and you know bring more people to sport and everything and also bring more kids into the sport because they are the future of it you know so young people basically should coming like you're doing it with 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 the um, what do you call it what do you call it Kencham <laughs> table tennis club yeah Kencham oh. table tennis club but we've gone a bit off topic because I think you're trying to not get me to tell the tale of the ugly bit of our partnership. <laughs> um, so again, I can't remember who we were playing, but it was in Division 2. Um, and by the way, you made very good points in your tangent there to try and get me off this subject. But it was in Division <laughs> 2. Uh, it was away, so it was in St. John's. So that narrows down the teams for anyone watching can probably remember who it is. Um, and... We played the doubles. I think we we might have won the first set, possibly. Um, but then we lost the second, lost the third. So I know we were definitely two two sets down at, at, at one point. And um, need to say, tempers for, were were afraid. They were they were going up and up. You know the the, the language and the you know the fight, everything. And um, yeah, but words were said. But um, it was a it was a big explosion. And um, but I think that kind of um, 
kind of affirmed a few things in in our heads afterwards and you know a, approach the, the next few games differently and I think we it brought us a little bit closer together rather than pulled us apart as you know nasty people I mean have you got any thoughts on that one I know you remember which one uh, I remember all of it <laughs> yeah well I have a little bit of a temper obviously because I am more close to the Mediterranean you know my my <laughs> my emotional side is much more um I wouldn't say aggressive, but I would say it's more fiery, let's say. Yeah. Um, and I do remember um, of saying certain things. And obviously that we have to mature, you know, as, as people as well. And, and that helps, actually. Bad things come for a reason, but, and, and they're not nice to have. But it also helps us to mature and not do it in the future. And the approach is that we can play together without having any arguments or having to say words or getting <laughs> busy about certain things, you know. Exactly, exactly right. You know, it's, it's like you say, it's, it's a game at the end of the day. It's, it's an amateur sport that we're playing. But yeah, I do, exactly. I'm, I want to get back to that point you did make in your lovely distraction technique there about um, <laughs> the, sport being, uh, <laughs> the sport being hidden, you know, and a bit underground. Um, you know, I, yeah. I wrote a, a paper about that probably back in 2014 and I read it back the other day and, and nothing much has has really changed so like you touched upon there as well about um more clips online of, of local league and potentially yeah. inviting people to sit in and, and watch the games I think yeah I completely agree that would really really help the sport and um you know attract better you know you sort of younger people to the game yeah as many as we can you know as m- more people gets involved into it, then, then more evolution, then more uh, standard. You know, the standards will raise. Obviously, not. Well, my approach, from my point of view, I think that if you want to evolve, you need to promote it and you need to keep it. You know, keep the level raising. Obviously, and that only happens if you have people playing, and if you have young kids playing. You know because they're the future and they are actually much faster than us. And they pick it up very quickly, like very, very quickly. I think, I think we should do a little bit more promoting it, you know? And that's actually one of the reasons why I became coach because I, I not, I, it's not, you can't have it all for you, for yourself. You need to share it, you know? If you share, if you share it, you're actually, you actually care for it, you know? So, um, I would like to say that some people have that in mind and do things and actually are very proactive doing it. And you're one of the, those people that I know. Also, Don, Don Turner is also another person that I know, you know, with that meeting up group in St. Mark's School um, every other Sunday. And she does a, an awful lot of work, you know. It's, it's amazing what she's got there. It's like 30 people. I think that, you know, the local leagues, especially the Bath League, should have a look into that and see if they can help them, you know. We've, together, me and her, we've set up a few sessions of coaching, you know, for people that want to improve. So there, there is the interest, you know, but the, the fact that it's hidden and it's only mouth-to-mouth knowledge, basically, it's not something that is open to to the community you know it makes it a little bit more difficult to get into that's what i would say yeah i mean you have to go through the you know down the google rabbit hole of actually trying to find out whether a static web page has got up to their information or not you know there's no yeah. social media popping to tell you that this is on tonight this is on next week come down do this look at what we do you know yeah i definitely yeah. agree with that and yeah, I mean, especially with, you've been down uh, to my club, Kenshin Table Tennis Club, and, you know, we are trying to bring on kids uh, in the right way. I mean, we don't, you know, don't have a uh, a lot of kids coming, you know, at, at the moment, but, you know, two of them have, have joined the league last year and did extremely well in Division 2. Yeah. Big shout out to Chris and James again, second yeah. way around the boys. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're also looking to bring on um, the under-15s champion and runner-up, uh, Nathan Cundy and Andrew Quinn so they're going to be getting their taste of league table tennis uh, very very soon obviously being a little bit younger it's knowing when to gradually break them into that yeah that mold 
well, speaking to the, sorry, speaking to their parents, maybe we can include them in the teams, you know, especially if the C team goes on and keeps going. We could probably introduce them into the sport in, the, I don't know, a few nights or evenings that, you know, that they they could play. So sort of saying, you know, to have the taste of what what's a league game and things like that, you know. Um, well, yeah, I've got my ideas for, for Ken Milsom, who, um, you know, we mentioned him earlier, Ken Milsom runs a key centre table tennis club, which is the table tennis league team in uh, in Canesham, where I'm from. And, you know, that brings us on nicely to the to the future, for, for my future, your future um, in the sport next season. I haven't got the contract ready to sign yet, though. But um, obviously, we, we finished above the, the A team last year as our B team. You were the standout player. You know, I want to blow your trumpet because you're too humble to do it for yourself. Um, you are our standout player. So, you know, really appreciate those efforts you put in and, you know, getting those vital wins at, at different times during that season. And even Thank coming you. along to support the rest of us when you weren't playing, you know, that shows a lot of depth and, depth and character and, you know, good, um, good leadership traits for yourself. But obviously <laughs> next year, ne- next year it's kind of um, a bit different. I think um, we're going to lose quite a lot of players from my team, certainly, and um, potentially the, the other two teams as well. So, yeah, I'm always looking at ways how we can bring on, you know, Nathan, Andrew, you know, if, if James and Chris are still around, and I know there's a couple more social players from Kencham that, that want to play as well. So I think it's going to be exciting for, for the sort of key centre next year, whatever direction that goes in, a big shake-up yeah. of all three teams. But what are your sort of plans for next year with, um, you, you know, your three leagues? I mean, what are you aspiring um, to do next season? Yeah, well, I, I don't know yet. It, this will all depend on, on how the leagues approach the, you know, Oh, I don't know when it starts and what type of league is, is that going to happen. For example, Bristol League was speaking about doing a season with only half the games, just the teams having them face, facing each other just once. If that, if you know, if that would happen, uh, if they can't start it in September, start it in the beginning of the year of the next year, you know, wow. and having on, only half a league, so. Base, you know, per se. Uh, yeah. So I don't really know what the plans are. I, what I do know is a personal achievement. I want to improve, obviously. You know, I want to progress, and I want to be in a team that wants the same. Obviously, you know, I, I really like to play with you guys, <laughs> and it's good fun, and I will certainly keep doing it if that's possible. So I don't know. We'll see. We have to see what the future brings on. And so you, you know, you mentioned earlier about the percentages aren't necessarily the most uh, important thing. But do you, how do you sort of measure your your goals? You know, say if it was a normal season without obviously all this uh, virus stuff. What do you What do you mean? You do you mean in terms of percentages or? Well, yeah, you said earlier that they they weren't particularly important. So how do you measure your your goal of improvement? Yeah, well, I don't like to look at the numbers. I know that. Obviously, winning a game is 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 good. You know, it's better. <laughs> but also, giving a good game to a better player than yourself is also important. You see, so for example, if I lose three nil to someone that I know that is better than me, and I given a good fight, I've done my best. That's perfectly fine for me. You know, well, uh, I assume that I'm on a lower level. I hope. Ob- I'm going to remind you of that when we next play, okay? Okay. <laughs> when I think that the player is on to my reach of myself getting the win, I obviously get frustrated if I don't do it. But, you know, not, it's not a linear game. It's not, it's not that, okay, this one has the best technique, has got the best technique, he's going to be the winner. That that doesn't happen in real life, in anything, basically. So it's just... You have to be strong mindfully, you know, you have to be, or have to have a strong mind and face it when the opportunity comes, you know, so. And th- this is just me thinking out loud, but obviously um, how much of the, um, the sort of system, you know, above the sort of premier local divisions um, do you know about? I don't know much. I know that there are county uh, 
county levels or, or championships. I don't know how it works. Um, I know that there's a British league, you know, there's um, like a national league. Well, myself, I, I'm already in a veterans, so, you know, in a veterans age. Not that I look like, so I'm <laughs> nearly 29 <laughs> um, on the look. Uh, but, you know, they, they for example, organize uh, championships or what they call veterans masters around the country. And that's also good, you know, you can practice, you can actually participate that if you're in that stage of, of veterans group. There's also some Grand Prix, Grand Prix, you know, if you're willing to participate on that, that's a very good, good level of playing as well. Uh, I've never participated in any, I've never done that, because I think that I need to, you know, develop more my technique and my approach to the game and stop being lazy and move and, you know, proper footwork and everything. <clears throat> and then once I reach that level, then I probably will do it. But that's my knowledge of it. I think that was very, very telling of what, you know, your first sentence when I asked you about what's higher than the Premier Divisions here here in England, because personally, I, I didn't know either until I looked into it. And even though I've looked into it now, I still don't know. So maybe that's something that, you know, you guys at Table Tennis England, um, could possibly help us out with because you know the league system above local league level is um for me thoroughly confusing i mean there's several we've already mentioned just then several different competitions for for different age groups and different abilities but you know how does that structure actually look for you know the the average player you know i think that's a wider topic uh, altogether to to sort of talk about um sorry wait for that bike to go by um <laughs> But no, that's very interesting. So could you see, um, you know, obviously not participating in any GPs before or any British league and stuff, you know, could you see yourself once the fog's cleared and you can see what pathway to take? Could you could you see yourself doing something like that? Well, I would. Yeah, why not? I don't see why not. We had um, from the Mendic, from the Mendic League, we had an email once saying that I, I can't remember if it was at, at the county level or at the national level, but I think it was at the county level. They were wanting to do a short format league, something like that. If someone was interested to contact like, his person, you know, and, and all of that. And that would take you to a further area than just the Bath League would, would do, you know. I think it was between counties. I'm not quite sure of it because I can't, can't remember all, the, all, of, all of it. I thought mm, that would be interesting, you know, but then, but then what came into my mind was, okay, and if that happens, how will I play it? Because I have a full-time job, you know, nine to five. How is that going to happen? What type of format of competition are we talking about? <laughs> you know, is it, is it being played on the weekends? Is it being played during the week? I didn't know all, the, all of that information, obviously. It sort of brings it back around to that communication, uh, you know, sort of problem or not. Well, yeah, I say problem. Yeah, probably problem is the right word, you know, issue uh, that we've got, you know, whereby, you know, table tennis is underground. It's not spread out in, into the main, yeah. not mainstream, but at least on an active, proactive social media sort of channel. But again, that's a bigger topic. I just wanted to spitball, actually, um, while, you, while we were talking about that. You were involved, you know, with a bit of coaching in Portugal when you were you're younger. You know, how's the sort of club system? I don't know if you saw much of it, but how is it compared to England? Well, is it something different? It's slightly different. For example, here you have enough people playing to play in a in a local league like the Bath League does. You know, it's different small towns together. Uh, in Portugal, maybe in the bigger cities, maybe in Lisbon, you could be able to do that. Uh, there are a few clubs and they play on divisions, you know, but like regional and then um, like district. Uh, and I don't know if district would be, probably county, county would be the same type of level mm -hmm. and then national, I would say. So it's, it's not like here in Bath, there's a, a small group of teams that play there would be more between towns, you know, mm. bigger distance, I would say, between each other. 
like more if you divide portugal is a small country by the way so if you divide it and north center and south for example you'd have three regions where you would play and that's probably how it's organized there in term in terms of leagues i'd say so the regional league for the south will play between different towns but at a bigger distance not so close not so locally so then if you were from uh you know say like you said lisbon um and you played for lisbon c team say you know i don't know how it would yeah. work it doesn't matter uh, sporting or benfica or yeah and then you were, yeah from another town and they said you know i play for the b team you'd know roughly what standard that player would be potentially yeah it's from it's divisional so you have division one two and and prem let's say it's similar but that's that there's a bigger distance between towns or little villages if i, I don't know if i can explain myself better than that because that's, of my dance experience oh, that's great that's great and yeah that was everything really i had on um you know on my little notepad um to talk about today really i mean um you know i just wanted to sort of have a chat with you like because we haven't had a face-to-face -face for well since march i'd say isn't it you should um, be pretty you should be practicing now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't have a table or anything like that, so, you know. And I just wanted to ask whether you had any anything to, to chat about, you know, with me, really. Any further thoughts or anything like that? I want to expand on. Oh, uh, no, I'm looking forward to meet you. I hope that Somerset Pavilion opens, opens as soon as they can, you know, and that you can have the same table tennis evening that you were having with the amount of people that you're having and and actually making the sport grow because that's what was happening in the beginning there were just a few people coming in you know 10 12 14 and then all of a sudden uh, one year later is 28 it's higher numbers and you actually need more space bigger room <laughs> i don't know it's i think it's a very good work and well done for you well done so i'm looking forward to see you i want the leagues to start I understand the concerns that people may have because of their age group. You know, most people practicing this is over 50s, over 40s, this sport. So I understand the, the concerns. But I think that once the government gives us the, you know, the possibility of, to do it, we should start doing it with sen well, no, sensible, you know, with a, sen with a good use of sensibility you know i do think of one more question as well we mentioned um uh, obviously alex given table tennis a go you know for a couple of seasons now um yeah. and you did used to bring your youngest daughter along as well to try and play mm -hmm. a bit of table tennis um last week we talked to sue about primarily um, female table tennis and you know what can we do to get more women or get more girls to carry on through you know into into adulthood playing. Um, have you got any thoughts or opinions on that? Bit of a random one, but. It's a bit, it's a bit tough because I've been trying to take her. <laughs> I've been trying to say, to say to her, look, you should practice table tennis. You know, it's a good sport. Why don't, why don't you do it? Why don't you go for it? And I think they're as good athletes as, as men, you know, it's the same. So it's just a matter of them having the interest and practicing it. Now, what can be done to improve that? I I really don't know. The, I don't know. We need to we need to start thinking about it. You know, maybe maybe the girls feel constrained because it's a lot of men around. You know, and they get looked at. So we I don't know. You know, it's not it's it's a difficult question. It's about interest, and it's also about giving them the chance of being comfortable or feeling themselves comfortable. And that's what I think. Not quite sure if this is the, the right words, you know, but that's my thought. No, that's good. That was <laughs> yeah. good. Well, I know, yeah. I, sorry, I just want to say this. I know that the Bath League and Table Tennis England were doing some courses or some, how do you call it, sessions for women here in Bath. They did that. And they did last year where we had the opportunity pra to practice our coaching as well uh, in St. John, St. John's School. And the group were motivated to be there playing. And I was questioning them, so when do you go into a team? 
because you have you have enough technique to do that oh no uh, you know i don't want to be <laughs> hammered and you know <laughs> hammered in in a good in a good way of playing and i said well if that happens it will happen only one game you know you you can come up and then the next game that won't happen like you know, other players are doing, other gr girls are doing. Ah, no, no, you know, there's still a little bit of distance. And I don't know, we need to break that barrier. We need to break, we need to bring them into the sport because they, they're keen to play, all right? They need to be, they, what, what I think is that they need to feel comfortable doing it without being seen as a, a foreign object doing it, let's say. And, and potentially, you know, um, letting people watch um, league games, you know, be it at St. John's, you know, one of our sort of bigger venues in Bath or, you know, other venues closer to, to where they are, just to see the, maybe just, just to see the standard to break that, that barrier. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we need to think about it and propose it to the Bath League. I know that um, Mike Newton, he was talking up to the ladies, you know, why don't you girls do a team? Or women, you know, and get into Division Two, and get this, you know, get this moving on. Why, why don't you do that? And there's, you know, there's all, always that feeling of constraint. You know, it's just, it's just a startup. We have to make it move and, and start it. I think it will. Be they have to do it. Obviously, you know, nobody can force it. it. Needs to be by their own will, but. That needs to happen, you know, there needs to be a push there. <laughs> because yeah. they have fun. They they have fun when they're when they're practicing it. They love it. So why not, you know, join them? So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what the future brings us. <laughs> exactly right. I mean me me and Sue were were talking and, you know, had a few ideas. So yeah, maybe we're we get all three of us together at some point and um yeah, see so we can hatch a plan here in Bath to get more more women playing well yeah. I, i'm involved in that coaching sessions with dawn uh i know that group i can go there and i could actually propose some some bits if if that is to happen you know there's also some of them also said about the, um, the time that it was played from seven it's a bit late so why not find out how to organize it for their schedules i'd say yeah spot on that is exactly what um sue said last week as well so yeah um watch this space essentially any women in bath watching this now and haven't picked up a bat or you have picked up a bat and you know haven't been sure to play uh you know we'll be sure to do something you know very soon when we can uh, get up a mobile again and start playing table tennis and that's everything from from us tonight i think um you know thank you very much ricardo for for coming on have a little chat with me you're very welcome. I thank you as well for inviting me. There's going to be a lot of cuts in the, in between because <laughs> of what was said. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no. I'm fully prepared for that, and that bit's actually staying in, so that's fine. Cool. Um, <laughs> but no, thank you very much. Like I say, I've been Mark, a table tennis player and coach here in Cainsham. Ricardo is also a coach in Bath, so feel free to reach out to him for any coaching needs. And um, yeah, we'll see you all again soon. Uh, make sure you, if you've liked our awkward chat here, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification. See, I've rehearsed this, right? Hit notification, yeah. get alerted to all our latest videos. Uh, like, share with all your friends, say hello to your parents for me, share with them, say hello to your friends, get it on, you know, Snapchat, get it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you're still watching, see you later. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>